everybody welcome to the Waldock way my name is Jessica and today we are going to be looking inside the science unlocked boxes from home science tools you guys I am super excited because these are amazing like amazing so this is the first thing that I'm gonna show you and it is the getting started pamphlet you can see here we have chose the fizz foam and fire which is an introduction to chemical reactions but there are multiple different ones that you can pick. It doesn't have to be this one. There's um, a Newton's Notion that we also grabbed because it looked like it would be a lot of fun too. On the front here, you have just an overview of what your learning goals are. And then inside, the directions on how to use the teacher's guide, the student workbook, a key for the different things. So um, the question mark key, the yellow tab, what you know each of the icons means. And then a packing list of everything that's inside the box. So that is your getting started pamphlet. Next up, let's go ahead and look at the student workbook. So the student workbook is bright and colorful and fun. It tells you the activity, what you're going to need, any warnings, and then your step-by-step -step directions with pictures, which I really appreciate. I like being able to see. And then when you get done, there are normally some reflection questions, kind of like a, what did you see? What happened? See, here you go again, there's some more reflection. I have to say, I think my favorite thing about it is that while there are discussion questions and reflection questions, there is not a ton of busy work. So you are having a blast doing the hands-on experiment, and then you are just talking about it and reflecting upon it, but you're not having to do a lot of busy work. Instead, you are just kind of getting to the bottom of it. So it is very, very fun. If you're looking to add more experiments, this is a great way to do it. And then in the back, you have a glossary. Now the teacher's guide is set up in a very similar way. Although it does include a planning guide in the very front. So it tells you the activities. It also tells you the time required for each of them. So you would know going in if you were gonna have the amount of time that you needed. And then it tells you the day or lesson. So you could do this entire thing in 16 days in an eight hour total investment which sounds very doable. Sounds like something you could either incorporate into your homeschool as a standalone science, or you could add it even as something you're already doing. Now it does have all of the answers to anything that's in the student notebook. So if you wanted um, to keep this away from your student so that they couldn't see it, because like I said, it does include all of the answers. So you don't have to know them going in. There is an answer key. And then that same glossary is in the back for you as well. A, another one of my super favorite things is that inside this box, when you get it, not only do you get the teacher's guide and the student notebook, but you essentially get absolutely everything that you're going to need to do the experiments. And we're talking safety glasses, yeast, baking soda, matches, the beakers, I mean, everything that you're gonna need is already in here. So it makes it really, really easy to just grab your books in this box and sit down and just dive in and have a blast doing all of these hands-on experiments with your kiddos in your homeschool. All right, Emily, what are we doing today? Open toothpicks explosion. That sounds fun, let's get into it. All right, do you wanna read a little bit about it? Yes, sir. First, you will perform a chemical reaction to make what many people call elephant toothpaste because it makes a lot of foam that you can imagine an elephant using to brush their teeth. So we have all of our supplies laid out that came in our kit from Science Unlocked. So I think we are ready and um, let's go ahead and prepare. Oh, here's a warning. It says, do not eat. Who would eat that? It's That's disgusting. Nasty, right? Who would okay, eat it? Okay, don't eat it. Do not eat it. <laughs> like all of our science experiments, we have chemicals, and we have to be safe with our chemicals. We've read our list and our precautions. So, 
One of the most important one is the hydrogen peroxide. This is not like the one you have in your medicine cabinet. It's more well, like, like what a hairdresser what, uses. Like what you do when you put in your ears, like when you get water in there? Yeah, well, this one's a little more serious. It's stronger. It's 6%. So, Ooh. all right. So, what do we got? What do we got? We also have a thermometer we're going to be using. So. Cool. All right, so we're going to be looking for a couple things. Um during our chemical reaction. Uh, we're going to be looking for possible chemical reactions, meaning a change like you're creating another chemical. If you put two things together, you create something new. Um, also, there's physical change where it goes from a liquid to a solid or a solid to a liquid. So that's a physical change. Um, it can produce byproducts which would be, um, if you light a match, you can get heat, okay? It, there was no heat before because right. there was no reaction, but the minute you strike the match and the chemical reaction occurs, then it produces the flame, which produces heat, okay? So there's different types of reactions, different types of things that are produced by the reactions, okay? So the reaction we're learning about today is chemicals, right? That's right. We're going to basically... Mix up the chemicals as per the directions, and if everything works out correctly, we're going to create elephant toothpaste. And it's going to go gonna, everywhere. And hopefully it goes everywhere. Hopefully remember, not too much. Nope, we can clean it up. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, so let's start with, you want to run through your list here? Yes, it says sir. what to do. So what are we doing first? Put on your goggles and gloves. Did it. Okay. And um, place the gratitude, the, um... Graduated. graduated cylinder in the pie plate, which is this? Yes, and they call it a graduated cylinder because the measurements go up, so you are gradually increasing to whatever measurement you want. Also, like when you graduate from school, you're going up to grade, the grades? Grade, grade, that's right. So that's why they named it that way. Hmm. Now All right, so we have it in our pie pan. What is next? Step two. With their teacher supervision, use the pipette. Mm -hmm. Which would be, as this, we know, a pipette. To add 7.5 milliliters. milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to the graduated, graduated cylinder. cylinder. Take your pipette. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take the top off. I'm going to maintain control on the hydrogen peroxide. So squeeze it. Yes, ma'am. You're going to squeeze it. And all right, that's full. Now, don't add it all. Go slow so you can make sure you get the correct measurement. You may have to do it a couple times. You can go a little faster than that. Okay, keep going. Nope, not bad. All right, let's do it again. And remember, we're going for 7.5 milliliters. Good job. Got it. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Now you're getting real close to so this is where it's going to be key to pay attention to how much you're putting in. All right, a little more, a little more, a little more, just a itty bit, a bit more. You have any? That's a little side, that's about perfect, babe. Step three, add two slash three drops of food coloring to the graduated cylinder. Okay, so two to three drops of food coloring. They're giving us green. All right. Oh, and this one they show orange. Right. Steps. All right, go ahead. You're going to squeeze that into the cylinder two to three drops. Should we do three or two? I will go ahead and go for the most. We want in a, a bang for our buck. Let's do it. One, two, three. Perfect. Add two slash three drops of dish soap from the dropper bottle to the gratitude. Um, graduated. graduated cylinder. Perfect. Okay. So I'm expecting that Now this dish one says dish dishwashing liquid. All right. And it says two to three. So should we do three? I'm saying big bang. Let's do it. Okay. Do you think an explosion will happen? Nope. It shouldn't. These are all that we're getting set up for. Oh, I got some stuff on my thumb. Yeah, food coloring. <laughs> we're setting up for the reaction, but we haven't added the catalyst that's going to create the reaction. We're getting all of our ingredients. So, 
One, two, well, that's going to take a while to get there. Three, yeah, that's going to take a while to get there. All right, so step five, what are we doing? Gently swirl to mix the hydrogen peroxide, food coloring, and its dish soap. Okay, do you want to swirl or you want me to swirl? Um, Probably be best for you to swirl because that probably looks really good. Okay, hard. so I think basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all that stuff mixed up. So it makes Kind of get the soap agitated. Reaction. Yeah. So instead of having three components, it all blends in to make one wow, before we add the catalyst. If you look at it, it's a darker green now. Man, it's pretty. Step six. In the beaker, not the, the cylinder, fill up to up to 50 milliliters line with warm water. On this one, I want you to take the stir stick. I'm going to open up our packet of yeast. And we're going to pour it into the warm water. And then we're going to mix it? And then you're going to mix it, yes ma'am. You can actually smell the yeast when it blooms. Oh, <laughs> oh it smells like... Yeast. <laughs> disgusting stuff. <laughs> Like All righty, let's move to the next step. It looks like we'll have to flip the page. All right, let's see what we're at. We're at step eight. Let, All right, we need to do what on step eight? Let the yeast sit in the water for one minute. Okay, so we're going to set a timer. We're going to give it one minute to sit. That's allowing the yeast to actually come to life and do what they need to do use a clean pipette to get out one milliliter of the yeast solution the pipette should be full basically now full does not mean the squeeze part the squeeze part when you siphon you push all the air out of the pipette when you release your fingers it expands creates a vacuum so it sucks the yeast up into here that line right there is actually going to be what you need, which is a full pipette. Let's take it all the way to the bottom. I'm going to fill it all the way up to there. And then let it settle back down. Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. It smells disgusting. So it's in there. It's coming out fast now. Whoa, can we check its temperature? 